Welcome back, bros, to another video review. And today we have the opportunity to take a look at the Studio Series 86, number 22, for Transformers the movie character Braun. So, for the contents, this is what we get inside. We get Braun, the figure himself, and he comes with one accessory, a blaster, and the instruction manual, which is standard for all Transformer figures. Now, guys, we're going to switch it up today because I'm pretty sure this is going to be a late video review. And with that being said, I'm pretty sure you've seen tons of other content by your other favorite YouTube reviewers. But today, we're going to do an extensive, very detailed comparison video with the Studio 86 Braun toy with other toys we may own in our collection. So sit back and enjoy the comparison video. Thank you. So here we are, and we have Braun right here, and he looks G1 accurate to the movie, what we've seen and we all love with this character. And also, Braun has the same articulation as what any deluxe size figure in recent waves as in Studio Series and Legacy. So there's no need to spend time on that. Let's go ahead and get to the comparisons for Braun. So here we are for comparisons, and Braun is a very grumpy little mini-bot. As much as I can remember of Braun, these two Brawns look great, but now the Titans Return version, which is right here on your right in the screen, is now obsolete because we have the Studio Series 86 Braun, and that is fantastic. The details on it are darn near perfect, in my opinion. The head sculpts is... The head sculpt on the new version is leaps and bounds better than the Titans Return version. Now, the Titans Return version is not bad, but like I said, with the new version and studio series, there's no longer needed for that Scout class or Legend size class figure because we have a now accurate Brawn. Now, with that being said, the difference between the two is that the new Brawn actually came with a weapon. So I'm excited that they gave us that. So Braun now is no longer defenseless and has a weapon to use to try to defend himself. Because normally, with him being a grumpy little mini-bot, he likes to use his fists and his feet in the previous episodes from the Transformer G1 um, cartoon back in the day. So if you didn't know that, go look him up. You can use Transformer Wikipedia or whatever you want. You'll see Braun all the time using his fists and his feet to combat the Decepticons rather than a gun. With that being said, this new studio series, Braun, in my opinion, looks a little lacking. I feel like he's supposed to have uh, a smaller version of that Megatron uh, cannon that we all remember Braun using during that one episode to get payback on Megatron for using him and his other fellow Autobots. So, this is like my little version. I don't know where this gun comes from, but it definitely looks good, guys. It gives it that Megatron looking that's cannon I would like to have. But like I said, it is a gun. I wish I could make it a cannon, but there's no ports like it is in the Titans Returns figure. So I, I am a little bummed out on that, that he doesn't have the ports. But now I got an angry, grumpy old man loaded with two weapons ready to do some damage to Decepticons. So here we are, let's keep the comparisons coming. And here we have all of the mini bots that have been released so far that Hasbro has updated. Yes, this is a good amount, but we are missing a few more. And I'm liking the way Studio Series Bronze fits in. And it seems like each mini bot is definitely smaller than your average deluxes, but they're different sizes within the group, with Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper being the smallest and the largest being more like uh, Warpath. They're definitely rounded out and they're scaling very nice with the future releases of these figures. So yes, with all that being said, the few characters that I'm going to show you right now that I mentioned that we're missing is the first one is going to be sea spray the second one is wind charger the third one is tailgate and the fourth one is going to be a remold of brawn is outback but 
I know you're saying we're missing two more. Yes, I have gears packed away in storage and also power glide. Once we get all of those made, we will finally have a completed set of the G1 Minibots. So I'm definitely excited to see Hasbro moving in the right directions and getting out these Minibots to help round out that Transformers G1 cast that we all want to complete and be able to enjoy in our collection. So here we are guys for my final comparison of Studio 86 Brawn in robot mode. And I'm trying to give you the most epic shot I can give you of all the Autobots that I own and that are pretty much in all of season one and season two. Now we are missing a few as stated earlier, uh, the mini bots, Outback, Sea Spray, Tailgate, Wind Charger, Power Glide, and Gears. Those aren't represented in the new updated technology and designing from the new Hasbro Transformer team. With that being said, I am looking forward to finally completing the deluxe size Autobots and getting the buzzworthy Bumblebee Earth Rise or Earth Mode Hound, which I would love to see coming soon. We don't have a date for it, but I'm definitely looking forward to adding him to the missing deluxe Autobot that you don't see before you. Now, with all the figures you see before you, you have uh, figures as big as the Commander class, as big as the uh, Leader class, uh, Voyager class, Deluxe class, and then you don't have any Scouts, but basically the Deluxe class now holds the smaller figures as well as the normal regular size bigger Autobots. So here we are guys, now we have Studio Series 86 Brawn Transform into its alt mode, which is its vehicle, compared with the figures I have before you. So let's start it off. Here we have the Commander Class Skylinks. We have the Leader Class Optimus Prime Earthrise. We also have the Deluxe Size Cliff Jumper and the Deluxe Size Blue Streak from the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line. And then not only that, here is a touch of G1 goodness. We have in front of them, Wind Charger, which is a G1 character. And as you can see, now you're seeing how much bigger we're getting with the Studio Series figures compared to what we got as G1. With that being said, guys, I meant to mention this character that we were missing during the Autobot, I guess you could say, reunion uh, picture or group setting that I showed you in the comparisons while Braum was in his robot mode. This little guy right here is what I meant to mention. We're also missing Autobot Swerve. So with Autobot Swerve, he is definitely gonna be a repaint of Autobot Gears. So with him coming out next year, now we have the opportunity to pretty much get our mini bots completed, hopefully within the next maybe two or three years. Because as of right now, we do not have a listing or a leak timeline for the Autobot, Power Glide, um, or Sea Spray. Now, the other ones that I didn't mention are basically remolds of a, uh, a previous figure. Like, for instance, Gears is a remold of Swerve. Brawn is a remold of Outback. Wind Charger, who is also not listed, is a remold of Tailgate. So basically, that's all that up front, guys. So continuing the size comparisons with the same figures, here we have the frontal view of these characters and these toys. They look good together. And I think Hasbro is doing a wonderful job of keeping the toys from the figures and characters from the G1 uh, cartoon in scale with the previous figures that we already own. I think they're doing an excellent job. So here we are for more comparison. I'm not sure if you thought about it, but I was curious myself to see if possibly Braun could fit inside of the Earthrise Optimus Prime trailer. So let's check it out. So wait a minute. There's somebody in there. Come on out. Swerve, what are you doing in there? You shouldn't be hiding in Optimus Prime's trailer because we're trying to see if Braun can enter the trailer. 
So we got bronze frontal in, and that's as far as we're going to get, guys, without having this trailer open up. Braun is a big boy, so technically Braun can't get in there because of the roof of his alt mode is a little bit too high. So it was almost a good go for that, guys. And I would have loved to be able to have Braun just pop out to get more of that playability with some of the other figures that we have. But Braun is still a good figure, in my opinion. So let's move this out the way and bring in the main figure, what we're trying to compare. So here we are with the two figures that you want to see. Here we have Braun and with Braun. Now, you already know which one is the Studio Series and which one is the Titans Return. You can definitely see the two size differences right here and the scales. So, there's not much really to say about it. They both look good in their own way. I'm just definitely happy that we now have an updated uh, version of this character. And it definitely scales well with the figures that we already own in our collection. So now we've reached to the point of the review where I like to share my opinions and my thoughts on this figure and when I call it the Yabro figure grading system. So let's sit back and hear my opinions and hear my thoughts. Hopefully they will help guide you in making a purchase if you would like to add this figure to your collection. So to start it off, I'm going to tell you up front, in my opinion, I do believe this is a pickup. This is the best Studio Series 86 Braun that we're going to get as close as to G1, satisfactory, and uh, design quality. With that being said, it's perfect in my opinion. Uh, it does come with an accessory, which Braun did not come with with the G1 figure. So I'm definitely excited that it gave us his blaster to come with him. Not only that, it's got the G1 deco and it looks terrific. All the colors and details we need are on this figure. And when it comes to the playability, as you can see right here, you can play with the figure in vehicle mode or in robot mode. And with this being the first version of this character or this mold, yes, in the future, we will get a remold, which will eventually become Outback, which is what I believe will happen. So yes, this mold is perfect in my opinion. There is no looseness of joints on my copy. It's just perfect. So if you're interested in picking up a copy of this figure, I got my copy from HasbroPulse.com where I end up paying $24.99 plus taxes and then the item shipped out to me within a few days. But if it is currently out of stock at HasbroPulse.com, I'm pretty sure you can find it on Amazon.com and also at your local Walmart and GameStop stores where it might be already waiting for you on the shelf. Not only that, I did hear and see today that you might have been able to find it at your local Target stores also. As always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. By doing these four actions, it shows my channel a tremendous amount of support and not only that, positive feedback to continue to help it grow. Thank you once again for spending your time watching my video. And until next time, yeah, bro, I'll see you soon.